welcome back to Hello Nigeria. It's now time for us to look at exactly what's trending in the news. And Chukudi is also coming to us with some breaking news this morning. But how are you doing, Percy? I'm very, very fine, ladies. Happy Tuesday! Tuesday. Good to have you here. <laughs> Good to be here. A lot Good of action in the Nigerian Senate. No, in the National Assembly. Um, it was reported earlier today that personnel of the Nigeria Police Force obstructed the convoy of Senate President Dr. Bukala Saraki. He was around the Lake Chad um, Junction area in Abuja. And it was also reported a few minutes afterwards that operatives of the DSS also, um, you know, staged some sort of siege at the premises of the Deputy Senate President Ike Kweremadu. And for Saraki, it was reported yesterday, 8 p.m., that he got an invitation from the Nigeria Police Force to report this morning, 8 a.m., and it was also reported that this morning, too, Ike Koremadu got a letter from the EFCC saying that they were investigating, you know, some allegations of uh, financial misappropriation. And he was expected to, to appear by 10 a.m. But interestingly, we started monitoring events, and it was, it's been reported now that 15 um, senators from the All Progressives Congress have defected from the party. Now, what does that what does that mean? To which party this time around? Well, we have not... Because it's, I think it's a bit confusing what's going on in the APC and with the PDP. We're seeing our APC, new PDP, and it's a little bit No, confusing. no, the NPDP has... You know, the NPDP existed at the time when seven of the governors walked out on the convention of the PDP before the general elections in 2015. And so going into that alliance that formed the All Progressives Congress, the NPDP bloc had people like Rotimi Amechi, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and other people that moved away from the People's Democratic Party. So in the All Progressives Congress, you know, it's about structure. They still retained that structure, MPDP. Now, what you have is, as a result of the conflict of interest that has been, you know, in existence since the start of this administration, which eventually culminated in the emergence of Dr. Bukola Saraki and Right Honorable Yakub Dogara as Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives, you know, respectively, People have always struggled for position and for power and also for influence. Now, what you have is in the Senate today, there are 107. It's supposed to be 109, but you have 107. Now, what does that mean? The party in the majority is the All Progressives Congress. But with this defection now, it means that the All Progressives Congress, with this defection, if confirmed, although it's been reported as breaking news, and we have seen certain actions on the floor of the House of Senate, um, it will mean that the APC will be in the minority, going by numbers, if what is reported as breaking news is it's true. Confirmed. And what exactly is that going to mean going forward? Well, it will be an imbalance, because you have an APC that controls the executive arm of government, but it doesn't control the legislative arm of government. And in governance, the responsibilities of the organs of government are spelled out clearly. And if we had seen a friction in the relationship between the legislative arm of government and the executive arm of government, even though the majority are members of the same party, then it means that there's a problem. Interestingly, it has been reported that after this mass defection, they will now proceed on recess until September, the whole of August and September before they resume. Maybe before then, it will give them opportunity to strategize. And remember that INEC announced that from August 18th, the political parties in Nigeria are free to start conducting their primaries. And if we go by the calendar, by September, a lot of action will happen. Let us not forget, because you see, those of us that studied history, when we thought that it wasn't relevant, because many of us wanted to study mass comm, that we look back today and say, well, no disrespect to those that study mass comm, let it just be a three month course. Let's just continue. But the truth is, those that disregard the lessons of history are bound to make the same mistakes again. You remember when certain members of the National Assembly, the lower house especially, were jumping over the gate. This is the same template that is playing out. Because, you know, the governor, the, sorry, the, um, the, the leadership of the country at the time, under good luck, Jonathan, it would appear, laid a siege on the National Assembly, preventing Aminu Tambuwal, now governor of Sokoto State, who is also a member of the MPDP, who has also been reported to not be happy with the LPC and would most likely switch also from gaining access into the National Assembly. Now, what Nigerians need to understand is, now I will say it here, I'm not afraid. If, I, if they will carry me, it will make me popular. Now, I will say it in Pidgin. Now, politicians spoil Nigeria. You see, if we go by Nigeria's population and look at those who enjoy, like in Nebuchadnezzar, the resources that belong to the entirety of Nigerians, you, you will weep 
because Nigerians are suffering and Nigerians are in perpetual pain. What Nigerians must do is to begin to participate in the process. I say it every time and it will appear like I'm standing like a broken record. How do we participate in the process? Do not wait until February 16th and March the 2nd to vote in elections. Those who are public officials that represent our interests, we must hold them accountable and responsible and get them to fulfill the basic responsibility of government, yeah. which is to work in the interest of the Nigerian people. You don't have to go to a university, a polytechnic, or a tertiary institution of learning to learn that. Very begin true. to ask questions, yeah. begin to speak, it's and like, collectively with one voice, we'll make Nigeria it's right. It's like they always say, if you can't beat them, join them. If you cannot beat the system, join the system. It's time for us to actually infiltrate the system because there is so much strength in numbers. With 110 million Nigerians aged 35 and under, if everyone actually participated in the political processes of this country, I doubt we'll be seeing the scale of unnecessary events in our policy that we're seeing today. I mean, and that is why we need to remind you that we have 28 days to the end of the registration for PVCs. By the 17th day of August, you'll no longer be able to register to vote for 2019 elections. So now is the time to please go out, go out on mass, remind your family members and your friends, do not be discouraged. Get your PVC first. Then let's talk about who to vote later. Go through that hardship. Exactly. You know, take that day off work. Stand in that queue from 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning. Just make sure it gets done. They make the system so hard for us because they don't want us to participate. But in order for the system to ever change, you have to play that role and get in there. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.